Hi everyone, it's Nicole and welcome back to my channel. Today I am sharing with you um, my goal for how I'm going to set up my 2023 Traveler's Notebooks. Um, I had recently posted a video uh, just talking about what my goals and my intentions were for the year. And in that, I was showing some examples of how my past Traveler's Notebooks tend to get very thick um, because I am a chunky scrapbooker. Um, and there are a few things of goals of, of mine that I'm going to try to do for this year. Um, one of them is to not feel obligated to fill every single page of a notebook, um, only to do what is going to inspire me that way. I don't feel like I have to fill every single page and then feel the anxiety and stress from that if I don't have the time or the, you know, the resources to do that. So part of the reason um, is that, uh, but the other part is the, because I'm a chunky scrapbooker. Um, so what I wanted to do today is share with you how I intend on taking um, my notebooks moving forward. Now I am going to move them to a disc bound system. Um, I do have the ARC uh, paper punch. Um, this is not the only one on the market. This is just happens to be the one that I have. Um, other ones, uh, me and my big ideas or the happy planner, I believe have their own version. Um, I even think that Maggie Holmes planner system might even have them. There's single punches, there's page punches. Use what you have. Um, it's about using what I have this year. So that, that's another goal of mine. Um, but anyways, I'm going to be using the disc bound punch system, um, for my notebook. And then I'm going to be, I pulled these out of my stash. Um, I'm going to be using these, um, rings that I had left over from the happy planner system that I used to use. So I'm going to use these to bind my January notebook. I think it matches that cover pretty well. Um, so I have the intent to, tear this journal down. Um, I'm going to pull the staples, pull the pages out, and I'm gonna cut all of the pages in half. And then um, as I go through the month, I'll use what inspires me, stash away the others that I don't get to. Um, maybe I'll leave some of the quotes in there. I do already have one layout done. Um, I have this video, if it's not up already on my channel, it will be up within the next few days. Um, I do use the Coco Daisy Traveler's Notebook Memory Keeping Kit. Um, this is a subscription that I have had now for over a year. I absolutely love it. Um, I do purchase the add-in or add-on cards for the pocket scrapbooking, which is the 4x6 and 3x4 cards. Um, I think that's going to be yet another awesome way to use these because then now I can punch these and add them in between pages maybe um, as maybe like a little tip in someplace for extra photos that doesn't necessarily need a whole page or something that's just super cute like this because I don't know if I will ever use this but I really want this in here so yeah that just might be what this turns into um, and maybe my chunkiness will actually become more chunky but maybe the rings will actually hold more. So that is my purpose um, for the video. I'm going to go ahead and dissect my January 2023 Traveler's Notebook um, on camera here, show you how I'm going to set it up and how I'm going to create my cover. Um, and before I start the process, I am going to make the cover out of, let me grab them. It is a two pack of chopping mats. Um, I showed these in that last video as well. This is a two piece. They are 11 by 14. I grabbed these at the Dollar Tree. So for $1.25, you get two um, and you could make easily one, two, three, maybe four covers out of one package. So um, I'm going to go ahead and cut those down and I'll show you how I plan on adding those in for my front and back cover as well. So here we go. Okay, you guys, so the, here's how I started this. Um, I took my notebook, which I did already have an entry done in it. Um, I didn't let that bother me because eventually these pages are going to be full anyways. Um, I opened up my notebook in the middle, and there are the two staples that were in there. I removed them. Um, I did use my Tim Holtz poker tool. I would advise you not to use this. Um, you could very easily get hurt, so find something that doesn't have that sharp of a point. It's just what I had readily at hand. Um, so I removed those two staples, and then I opened up my notebook, and as I go through this, and cut these pages, um, I am going to go right down the middle at the fold line. Um, 
you may, depending on how your notebooks are stapled, you may have to um, trim a little bit off of each side. However, this month, this was pretty good. Um, so I just left it as is and just did right down the center. Now, as I started to cut these pages apart, um, as you can see on the right there, I left my notebook lay as though it was manufactured. Um, meaning as you flip through it in my uh, binder rings, you will flip, it would have been that you would flip through the same way if the notebook was actually still stapled together. Um, so I left it, the pages there for right now as they were intended to be. Um, as I was going through this, I realized that Coco Daisy also in their kits sends um, regular pages that you could use and along with pattern paper and it was just like a new spark of, oh my gosh, I can actually like punch these down and use these in my notebooks too. Um, so I'm very excited about this system. I can't wait to jump in and use it. But anyways, I went through, I cut all of the pages. I left them in order as they were intended to be. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and pull out my arc punch. Now, when I set this, um, there is a setting on it. Let me grab my punch real quick. Um, it doesn't label it as... A number it labels it as it said, junior um, my punch says junior I believe it's a four um, so I set it for that and it punched um, perfectly um, even and whatnot so it was that's the ideal setting I didn't have to mess with it for any reason um, so I went through and I punched all of my pages and I did goof on one of the pages the very first one there and I left it in so that you can see how I did it because everybody makes mistakes and sometimes it's learning from those mistakes that makes us better crafters. Um, so I left that in there and I will explain in my quick wrap up um, at the end how I plan on overcoming that. So I went through, used my punch on all of the pages. Make sure that you're punching on the right side of your page or I should say the correct side of your page um, depending if it's left or right. However, it is uh, intended to be. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab these rings from me and my big ideas. They were from my old happy planner, but you will see in the wrap up that I do decide to change them. These were way too big for what this journal is right now. Later on down the road, I may need them depending on how bulky and chunky this gets to be. Um, but I did just get a recent shipment in from, um, Amazon from, they were smaller rings. I believe they're one inch or just a smidge smaller. Um, and they work much better for right now. Um, so we'll see as the month goes on and progresses um, which ones I end up using and if I'm going to do one month or two months together and how that'll progress. So we'll see how that evolves. Um, so I'm just putting my journal back together. Um, and then after I get this main cover back on, um, I am going to actually go in and grab my clear chopping mats. Um, my clear chopping mats is going to be what I make the cover of. Um, but I'm just, in the meantime, I'm just going to do a quick flip through just so that you can see everything's in there back together. <laughs> All good. And even with that page that I goofed at the end with the punch, it still flipped through perfectly fine. So anyways, back onto the cover. Um, I'm going to pull one of those sheets out. This is clear chopping mats that I get from the dollar store. Um, they are an 11 by 14 size. Um, so I think that I will be able to get easily three covers front and back, um, out of the, the two piece set. So, you know, a buck and a quarter for, you know, three covers is a pretty darn good deal. Um, so I don't measure anything. I'm a lazy crafter. Um, so I literally lined up my cover. I took it off of my notebook, lined it up with the, the corner there just to measure quickly on how wide, um, I wanted to cut it. And I, I'm going to run this through my paper trimmer. If I would make another recommendation, it is to use, um, if you have a rotary, the rotary trimmer version of this, use that because I found that because the plastic was slick, um, that it wanted to move and shift on me. So I, I would recommend using rotary if you can. Now, when I cut this off, I realized that this had rounded corners and I did not want rounded corners. I wanted squared off corners. Um, so I actually ended up erasing that one mark measurement mark and cutting off the edge that had the rounded corner so that it gave me that square corner. And then I just eyeballed the second cut um, in place and that was it. And that is how I got my pointed corners, got rid of that rounded curve, um, and that is the size of the front. Um, I am going to go back through now and use this to literally eyeball um, the second one. And um, that will then give me um, 
the two front and the back. Um, now this is textured on one side, smooth on the other, so be careful when you punch your holes that you're doing it in the right spot. Um, there are little pieces of this plastic cover left over. I did not throw them away, I'm gonna hang on to them. I think I might use them for like a mini album cover or something down the line, so every scrap is reusable. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and line my covers up, put it one at a time through my punch. Um, it does go through it like butter, however, I would not do more than one because it is pretty thick plastic. Um, but again, it punches just fine. So punching the front, punching the back, and then I'm going to call it done, put away my um, arches punch, and then we'll assemble everything okay. together. Okay, so I have everything assembled. Um, I did get it put back together, but a couple things that I do want to note, um, if this is something that you want to try to do, and it's just some things that I learned along the way through trial and error putting this one together. One, those rings from me and my big ideas were too big for this. Um, it may be better if you have multiple months together, but to do it like this and to work through it and open it, it was just too cumbersome for me. So um, I ditched those and grabbed some smaller rings um, for my stash as well. Um, number two was the clear cover. I don't measure anything. Um, I will try to take the best measurements that I can for how, what size I cut this and I'll put it down below. But when I cut it, I did cut it to be exactly the same size as my covers. Um, and I did trim off the, the one piece I showed there in the video because there was a curved edge and I didn't want that. I wanted it to a point. Um, so it ended up being exactly the size of the front cover. If I was to do it again, I would probably make it a smidge bigger um, just to protect everything. And two, the cover is actually textured on one side, smooth on the other. Um, so if you choose to use this product or something similar to it, make sure that you pay attention to where you make your punches so that your rough side is out here and here, I did not do that. However, I'm not worried about it. Um, I'm going to just see if I can flip this around. I don't think the measurements work if I just flip it over. So I'll just use this for the cover of my next one and then make two backs the next time I cut. Um, so it's not that big of a video. Um, number three, the third thing and final thing that I noticed was I made a boo-boo. And that's okay because this was the first journal like this that I put together um, and boo-boos are going to happen and we just have to learn how to overcome them and work through them. And the boo-boo that I made was on one of these pages. I did not push. Here it is right here. I did not, when I was inserting it into my punch, I inserted the top, but I didn't insert the bottom the whole way. So when it punched it, it was off. So I did put it back in and I punched it again and it's working okay. Um, honestly though, what I may do is when I go to use this page, if I use the page, so that's why I'm not worrying about it now. Um, I may take the washi that came with this kit and run a strip of washi down this front or the back or any other coordinating washi that I have. Um, it's kind of like a stabilizer or a reinforcer and then repunch the holes again um, just to give it that little bit of a reinforcement. So that's just a little tip that if you goof kind of like I do, which is totally okay. Um, we all goof. We just got to learn how to overcome them. And that's how I plan on doing that um, when I do. However, on a side note, I absolutely love this. I love how it turned out. I can't wait to dive into this this month and finish my January layouts um, to see how chunky it gets and how it really looks on these runnings at the end of the month. Um, when I put the pages back in, I made sure that I kept them in order as they were originally intended and were printed in the notebook. Um, so when I cut it down, I made sure that the, all the pages stayed in order um, so that they were all kind of like matchy-matchy like they were intended. But yeah, that's it, guys. Um, that's all I have. Uh, stay tuned to see how January progresses. I'm going to try to fill what I can um, for the month, and then maybe I'll do a flip through uh, or a review or something like that later on in February or over on my Instagram. Um, so if you are not a follower of my Instagram, I invite you to come over there. I'm at Colby's1981. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Please hit that thumbs up and subscribe button. Until next time, have a great day. Bye.